going to do is go over to Google and we're going to go to Docker Toolbox is what we're going to Google. It's usually the first link on the top. I'll also include it in the description. So we're going to select for Windows. That's what I have as a Windows machine. If you have a Mac, please select it for the Mac machine. Now, if you're doing Linux by itself, just raw, you're going to set it up a little differently. All you're going to do is download the Docker engine and the Docker machine. But I'm going to show people who are using Windows and Mac how to set this up. All right, we're just finishing up the Docker toolbox download here. I'm going to go ahead and select that and open it. It's going to ask me if I want to install. I'm going to click yes. Now this installation is a little bit lengthy, so I'll try to speed it up where I can. I'm just going to hit next on this part. And that's where I want to put it. So next. All right, and I'm just going to stick with the defaults here. I don't need Git for Windows. I use Git on my boxes, so I don't need it there. The last thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to check to install the virtual box here with the drivers because being Windows or Mac, these containers don't run natively. You're going to have to have a virtual box to run them. All right, it's going to go ahead and install. All right, so what this is installing is it's installing Kymatic and Compose and the Docker Engine and the Docker Machine, and then it's going to ask me to install a VirtualBox. Now, this VirtualBox installation takes a bit of time, so I am going to speed it up. I'm going to go ahead and click Install. And this is the easy part of the virtual box being set up. The, the harder part of the longer parts coming up. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish. And then I'm going to launch Kymatic. It's in alpha right now. It's a great product. I would encourage Windows and Apple users to use it. So it's going to check checking my Docker, seeing if it can run the containers. It can't. So I'm going to say use virtual box. If I do have the retry setup, it's not native. It's not going to work. Right. So this takes a while. I'm speeding this up here real quick. So we can get through it, you're gonna to have to hit yes a bunch of times while it's installing this virtual box. All right, here at the end it failed, and this happens all the time. Even when you're launching Kymatic, just hit retry setup, and it should go right into it. All right, it's gonna ask me for a hub.docker.com username and password. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and log in. All right, and here I am. Here's the recommended ones. You can also see that we have a my repos, but my images. My images is blank right now. We're going to create one. We're going to go to the Docker Quick Start Terminal. I like doing it in here in Windows. You can actually do it just in the Windows file system if you want to. I prefer doing it in here because of the fact that I like using Vim and the Linux commands. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you that we're on the Docker machine. I'm going to do a uname A so you can see that we're not in Windows here. Uh, that command wouldn't even work in Windows. And then the last thing I'm going to do is a, a PWD so you can just kind of see the directory structure we're in. Now you can get to this volume from uh, Windows. It is mounted but like I said, I like to edit them here because I prefer the Vim and the command line. So I'm going to make directory Docker builds and, and I'm going to go in there and then I'm going to make a directory called Falcon Defaults. So I'm going to make myself a Falcon Defaults image. So this is the base that I'm going to start with. All right, now I'm going to CD into Falcon defaults. I'm first going to create a, a file called Docker file, capital D, everything else is lowercase. Now this is your main Docker file build. You're going to have different things like run and command that you can run in this. And so the first thing we're going to do is a from what our base image is. And we're going to use CentOS 7 as our base image. And I'm going to put that in all caps just to kind of keep it all the same. 
Then I'm going to do run and I'm going to do yum, uh, force the yes and update. Make sure that it's all up to date. I'm also going to do some installs here. So force the yes and install. I'm going to do wget. I think I'm going to do vim and mlocate, htop, just some basic things that I always use on my servers. Now we're going to do some setup when we start up and we're going to edit this later on, but for now, we're going to do the setup is done in, an, in a bash or sh file. The, the reason the, the setup is done in a bash or, H, or sh file or shell file is that that's the only thing that runs when you start these Docker instances. Everything else is cached and compiled together. Um, these run commands are compiled together. So we're going to copy our sh file to our startup sh. So we're copying it to the Docker image and we're going to run the command at the end of our Docker setup. That just tells Docker the entry point or, or what to run when it gets in there. So we're gonna edit this file here, uh, the startup sh. We're gonna do the bin sh, of course, and we're gonna do tell minus f dev null. What this allows us to do is keep the Docker instance running. Otherwise, it will have stopped running any command and will just shut down. And then we're just going to do a simple who am I just to show you that it actually ran something when we started it up. Now I'm going to make it more extensive and build a lot more into it, but this is a very basic image where we're just kind of updating some stuff, installing some stuff, right? So here we're going to do Docker build hyphen T. I'm going to do black eye studios port slash Falcon hyphen defaults zero zero one and hyphen T black eye studios Falcon defaults latest. Now you always want to have a latest, because that's what they do by default. I'm also going to do a no cache because the no cache will actually install it without a cache. I've done this before, so it had a little bit of cache. I want you guys to see what it looked like to install without a cache. And then you need the dot because the dot says to use the Docker file in the current directory, right? You, you can specify a Docker file, but we're just saying use this current directory. So you can see here it's finishing up its build and it is ready to go now. We're going to go over to Kitematic. We're going to click My Images, and we're going to click Launch the Docker Default. We can see there it says Root, meaning that it launched and, and did the Who Am I. So that's a basic uh, Docker image, and that's basically how you create your first one. I'm going to go through in de more detail how to refine it and how to make it more effective, but this is a basic Docker image.